Tenemos con nosotros al profesor Art Kohn, eh, es PhD en neurociencias y ha trabajado mucho en aprendizaje y desarrollo. Hoy está trabajando para Google a nivel mundial, ayudando a mejorar los procesos de aprendizaje y desarrollo. We have here Professor Art Kahn, and I make an introduction of you, uh -huh. saying that you're an uh, expert in neuroscience and you're helping Google uh, worldwide to improve learning and development. That's correct. Okay, then one question. What do people, what do companies train for? What do they train for? I think ultimately there's really, there's really only one purpose for training. And at the end of the day, organizations need to train in order to become more profitable. And you can have personal growth and you can have aspirations for giving people more satisfaction. But at the end of the day, if an organization is going to make a decision to train, presumably they have expectation of a return on their investment. Okay. Would that apply also for governmental agencies, uh, justice and police and everything? Yeah, but though with those kind of agencies, profit is not inherently a motivation. For example, for a police department of justice, we want to be more effective. So there would be ult different ultimate measures of success. Typically within a corporation, a profit margin, a return on investment. But for government organizations, we can set other kinds of ultimate goals. We're trying to create behavior change among our learners. It's not enough that they just learn new information. They actually have to be able to act on that information and make that organization more effective. Okay. What does neuroscience has to do with that? You're training, ultimately, you're training a brain. And the human brain has evolved to have certain preferences and tendencies. It acquires information in certain ways. When we don't understand the way the brain works, we teach in ways that are ineffective. And our learners don't learn as much, they don't retain it, they don't apply it. When we understand the brain, when we understand how the brain processes and retains information, our teaching can become much more effective. What would be an example of a word I heard from you, which is boosters? Boosters. Yeah, I call it boosters. Well, boosters. What is that in learning and development? The short, the short answer to that. Human beings forget at a rapid rate. Think of, think of the best. You, you go to a really good seminar here at ATD. How much do you remember of it the next day? And you love it. You enjoy the seminar, but the next day it just it seems to have vanished. We call that the forgetting curve. And human beings forget precipitously. It's just part of our, it's the way the brain is designed to forget most of what we acquire. But there are technologies that have evolved in neuroscience where we understand and can overcome the forgetting curve. Neuroscience has given us techniques that we know how to interact with the learner after training to sustain to sustain the knowledge. The, one of the, my, my little slogans is, what you do after training is more important than what you do during training. And we, neuroscience has helped guide us to develop programs of supportive training or boostering or reinforcing after training that overcomes the forgetting curve. So doing so, like boosters, is something that gives the people the real change to use the knowledge and make the change. What would you say How do you produce the change of behavior to produce results in the companies? Well, this, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is behavior change. Again, as I'd stated earlier, it's not enough that people have knowledge. Do they retain it? Do they apply it? Do they behave differently? We often say we want people to understand effective leadership. I think that's wrong. We want them to lead effectively. And so we can know When you have an after training program, when you follow up after your training, you can shape your learners and help them develop behavior patterns, guide them to behavior that actually is more effective for the organization. And that's my, that's my core mission. Okay, what, what are you doing exactly now at Google, which is, uh, I would say, a great company, and uh, what, what are the changes that you're moving Uh, in Google. I'm a little limited in what I can talk about, but I can tell you we're training, we're, our training is touching 1.2 billion people. And what's exciting about my work at Google is that they are willing to look at data 
and they are not married to the ways of training in the past. They understand past ways of training, but they say, what can we do within Google to make things work better? And I think we are developing some technologies that are going to be publicly available that can actually dramatically improve both learning, the acquisition, and the application of it. It's very exciting stuff. Ooh. Okay, then uh, uh, I have to uh, thank you very much and hope you go to our countries and help us uh, find new ways of uh, developing people in our countries to make the change, to change the people behavior, and to improve our countries and our uh, companies as well. Do you have a message for all the people? Well, I just it would be a great privilege to work with the people of Colombia and in Latin America, and I, I mean it. I've got a ton to learn. And I think every culture brings a new challenge and a new opportunity, and it would be a terrific pleasure to be able to work with the people of Colombia. Okay. Hope Thank you. you. Okay. Cheers. Thank you very much, Art. Cheers.